Math 31, welcome to chapter four. So now that we're through our review chapters, we're going to start unpacking different families of functions as we move throughout the rest of, or most of the rest of the course. So what that means when I say families of functions, we're going to look in chapter four at just linear functions. Chapter five is going to take us to polynomials and then rationals. Chapter six is gonna take us to exponentials and logarithms. And one of the main goals for you coming out of 31 is for you to be able to look at an equation. I give you f of x equals something, right? And you know just on site, okay, this is the basic shape of this graph. And here are some traits like domain, range, y-intercept, x-intercept, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and so we're going to be looking at those different traits in those graphs through different families of functions. And chapter four starts us with the linear functions. So in chapter four, we're gonna unpack lines. And this still might seem like a bit of review, and it, and it is. Even some of the, the topics that we cover inside this section, we've seen in chapters two and three, but we wanna give you a foundation. We wanna to talk to you about the traits of these functions, at least for lines, because lines are the simplest of the functions we'll look at, and then we're gonna build on that. Our functions will get progressively more and more difficult as we move through the rest of this course. So what are our learning outcomes? Well, for linear functions, we wanna determine whether a linear function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. We wanna interpret the slope as a rate of change, and we've already done this before, but it's great to review it. We'll write and interpret an equation for a linear function. We'll graph some linear functions, and we'll write equations of lines parallel and perpendicular to a given line. So again, for this section, some of it might seem like it's review, and it is but we're trying to provide you with a foundation looking solely at linear functions so that when we expand upon linear functions, you have that, that pattern, that rhythm down. All right, so let, let's get into it. I'm gonna scooch this up so we can see some definitions here. All right, so a function f is a linear function if f of x is equal to mx plus b, and we would call that the slope-intercept form of a linear function, and again, this is likely review for you. All right, b is going to be the initial or starting value of the function. That means when your input is x equaling zero. And m is the constant rate of change or slope of the function. And the y-intercept is at zero comma b. So I've mentioned before when we talk about any kind of point on the graph, whether that's a y-intercept, an x-intercept, a maximum or minimum, when it's points on the graph, you owe me an ordered pair, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So it's not correct to say the y-intercept is b. It's correct to say the y-intercept is zero comma b. When x is zero, y is b. And I want to emphasize this word constant rate of change because we don't, we don't focus on it too much when we talk about linear functions, but linear functions do have constant rates of change because for every one unit of x, I move up or down potentially a certain number of y units, right? And that's for every every x value. Like maybe I go um, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. If the slope is two, it's constantly changing. And specifically when we get to exponential and logarithmic growth, it will no longer be constantly changing. And that's one of the distinct uh, distinctive changes or shifts between linear functions and exponential functions. And we've mentioned this, this note before, for non-vertical and non-horizontal lines, the domain and range of the linear functions are both all real numbers. All right, now when you have a horizontal or a vertical line, this, this changes a little bit. All right, so moving on to increasing and decreasing functions. And again, we've talked about this concept a little bit as well. All right, we've talked about intervals of increasing and decreasing in chapter three, but for lines specifically, there's an, a nice tell as to whether your line is increasing, decreasing, or neither. And it all is based around the slope. So the slope determines if the function, specifically if the linear function, is an increasing linear function, a decreasing linear function, or a constant function. All right, and this is only true for the slope of, in linear functions. We don't have slopes when we move to parabolas. We don't have slopes when we move to um, radical functions. It's solely for linear functions. Now in calculus, they'll, they'll show you the workaround, but we're not in calculus yet. All right, so we have, if your slope is positive, your function, your linear function is increasing. All right, 
if your slope is negative, right, if m is less than zero, then your function is decreasing. And if your slope is zero, right, if you have a horizontal line, that's what it means when your slope is zero, horizontal line, then we would say your function is constant. All right, y isn't getting any bigger as x changes. All right, so for that, or with that being said, let's try example one. So let me move this up. Okay, so let's take a look. It says if f of x is a linear function, so we're, we're told it's linear, and 2 comma 3 and 0 comma 4 are points on the line, find the slope. Okay, there's my first direction. And then is this function increasing or decreasing, or potentially even constant? Well, let me find the slope. We know the slope formula. It's change in y over change in x, so 4 minus 3 over 0 minus 2. So that would give me 1 over negative 2. And I usually don't write my fractions with the negative symbol in the denominator. I tend to just put it out in front. So that is negative 1 half. So I found the slope. And I want you to imagine that you had a slope that was negative 1 half, right? You go one unit down, two units right. One unit down, two units right. Or potentially you go one unit up, two units left. But we've got rise over run. All right, now, is the function increasing or decreasing? Well, my slope is negative, so that would mean my function was decreasing. And if you were to graph that line, right, slopes of negative 1 half, they look something like this. So as I move left to right, you see my y values would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we would say that this function, this linear function, is decreasing. So since the slope is negative, the linear function is decreasing. Okay. All right, so with that, we're going to move beyond just calculating slopes. We're going to start to interpret them. So we're going to put sentences around them, which might seem a little bit odd but we're moving towards some statistical analysis in here where we will be putting concepts into sentences. We need to interpret things because we have all sorts of technology to get us numbers, but we need us humans to explain what those numbers represent. All right, so with that, I will catch you in example two. Thanks, gang. Bye.